Hi, this is Nanny. I hope everything is wonderfully blessed with you and your family. You know, January is almost upon us and this is a slap happy time for those who are in the health and fitness industry. As you probably know, gym parking lots will be crowded, classes will be full, um, nutrition and weight loss companies will have very full enrollment and meetings and all across social media we're going to see postings for different kinds of 21 and 24 day challenges and people posting pictures of their beast mode activity. It's, it's so fun to see so many people taking action to take care of their bodies. It's a great time. But before January gets here, I'd like us to take a little thought past January to maybe February or March or what about May. As you probably already know as well, February and March, some of that activity that we're seeing, actually a lot of that activity that we're seeing in January isn't happening anymore. The 25% increase that health clubs see in January is pretty much gone by mid-February. And by the middle of the year, 60% of paid memberships go unused. All across the industry, we see a dip and a dive when people who started off with such intensity and focus and motivation start to wane back that activity and follow through. Why? Not because of, you know, any kind of lack of inherent ability or willpower. Sometimes it happens just because life happens. Perhaps schedules get busy or maybe things are going on with their family. Maybe there's an injury or an illness or maybe it's even things that might be kind of celebratory, holidays, vacations, things that take them away from this extreme level of activity that they focused on and embarked upon in January. And so, the stop. There was this great start, then there's a stop, and then maybe after a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months or maybe that next January, it starts again. Does that sound familiar to you? It was pretty much status quo for me for many, many, many years. And it is extremely frustrating that starting and stopping and starting over. It's very actually demotivating. But beyond that, it's not very healthy. Studies have shown that irregular exercise activity actually brings on extra pounds that are more difficult to lose. And the weight loss and gain that can come from yo-yo dieting, going on and off these extreme diets and losing weight or then reverting back to those same old bad eating habits, that weight loss and gain back and forth can be detrimental to your health. Now this just isn't something that I've read from studies or observed from the thousands of people that I've had the opportunity to watch on health journeys over the past decade in my career. It's also what I've personally experienced. About 18 years ago, my back and forth weight loss actually contributed to the disease of my gallbladder and I had to have the gallbladder removed. All of this was done in an effort to get healthy. That doesn't make sense, right? But it's pretty common. So as we, if you're thinking about starting again, you know, picking up in January, this is not to deter anyone. Definitely get started. But what I'd like for you to do is to think beyond January and look a little bit further. I'm not boofing the challenges or beast mode. Beast mode is great if you already have a level of activity on your, uh, um, in your life. But to go from zero to beast can potentially lead to injury, one. And two, it's very, very difficult to maintain. I'm also not sitting up here trying to, you know, slam challenges. I love challenges and do them all the time. But if it's not, if exercise and activity or eating, whatever it is in that challenge, if it's not in some level already a part of your regular life, what happens is in our minds we set up this thought process of, oh, just let me make it through this many days. 29 days left. Oh, 20 days left. 10 days left. I got three days left. And then when it's over, bar the door. On day 31, after that 30-day challenge, what typically happens is a reversion back. So those temporary results and benefits that are gained were just that, temporary. They're gone away. What I'd like to help people to do is this year, if you're starting, and this is for people that are starting or starting over, is to set yourself up for not just short-term benefits, but long-term success. 
what I have found and what the Lord has guided me to understand that has allowed me to stop this starting over, over, over process in my life is that if I want to stop starting over, I have to stop stopping. Well, how do you do that? You have to set yourself up with something that you will be able to continue for a lifetime. When it comes to activity, before you can go to beast or really get benefits of these challenges that have you doing something extraordinary every day, it really is all about that base, about that base. You have to have a base of activity and that is where you start. My mind change came from this actually from God's Word. In the book of Luke in chapter 14. Jesus was um, looking at particular uh, people that wanted to be disciples or people that were coming to him saying, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. And what he tells them in Luke chapter 14 is count the cost. He does it through a couple of parables and hyperboles, but one of them that really stuck with me is he told one of those individuals, if you were going to build a tower, first, you need to sit down and see how much money you have to make sure that you will have enough to complete it. Otherwise, if you start and then you're not able to finish, people will ridicule you because you weren't able to stop finish what you started. This related and really spoke to me when it comes to some of this stop, start, start over because I embarked upon something without really counting the costs. Before you start on something, if it's whatever kind of program it is, look at where you are now. Look at your current level of activity, where you are. Determine what would be a reasonable step. Going from zero to beast really is not, is not a great idea. Balance is so much better. Going from sedentary into a challenge is not going to give you as much, as much benefit as going from sedentary into some kind of level of reasonable consistency. Find something a base that you will be able to do not only for 30 days or 60 days but for the rest of your life. Something that fits into your life and get that base, hit that hard. Count those costs. How is it going to fit into my schedule? What financial um, investments will I need to make? What kind of time investments? Is my body ready to do this so that I don't get injured? Once you have that, then commit to what you can commit to. Give that all you've got. And know that this is something that you're going to do for the rest of your life. You're going to fit something that will fit in your life for the rest of your life as much as you're physically able. This applies to exercise. This applies to nutrition. Make changes that are sustainable. And then when you have that and you put some time under there and you're starting to build that base, then you can progress and go on and hit that beast. Beast is great. It makes you feel fierce and, and powerful. But you have to go there. You have to grow there. Okay, this is part of the way that I have found that I stopped starting over. I found a base and sometimes my base changes based on what's going on my li in my life, but it doesn't take me back to a base of couch. <laughs> That's not where we're going. There's always some level of activity in my life. This is the kind of work that I do as a health coach with individuals and if you need some help really making that evaluation, sitting back and determining how, what is going to fit? If you need some help counting the costs of health and fitness, what those steps really do mean, not for 30 days, but for a lifetime, please do reach out with me. Reach out to me. I'd love to help you so that you're not starting over, but you're just starting anew. Starting something that is a new, improved way that's setting that base to move you towards the best body, the optimal health, fitness, that God intends and purpose for you. Make it real and livable in your life. I have a number of programs that are going on if you'd like to do group things. We're excited that with Nettie Johnson Faith and Fitness Services, we're starting some healthy cooking classes called Temple Care Cooking. We're gonna look at how we can take steps to make food that is good for us and good to us. It's gotta taste great. We're also going to be starting Pew to Pavement in um, winter of 2015. That's back by request. Um, we've had a number of requests to get that group program together again. And of course, I'm always um, taking, uh, 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 providing opportunities for individual consultations where I can sit and work with you to set your goals that are realistic, set up a progressive plan, um, periodized plan that will give appropriate increases and pullbacks to move you towards your goal. It's even help you to go through some of the behavior change elements that are so important to make them stick. And of course, 
more than anything, I'll be praying for you and with you to make those changes. You know, January is here. It's exciting. Let's take advantage of this period of renewed motivation for so many. And let's take some steps to do some sound temple care to get you where you want and need to be. May God bless you and keep you um, is my prayer. Take care. God bless and be well. Bye-bye.